Hello and welcome in the fifth episode of the evolution of Vilpu. In this episode I made a lot of progress from the previous video. The first idea was to introduce some trees in the scene. As happened all the time, I went to Google to copy some polytree design. But my hearty skills are very poor, so I created this. Two kinds of trees, with a big green crown. One little brownish and the other one with this cute branch. Obviously in future I can upgrade this vegetation, but for now I like it. I introduced the trees because I want them to spawn apples. So I start the creation of this fruit and... Uh, here we are again, the animator system. But this time was not so terrible. I made two animations. The first one is called when the apples spawn on the screen and it increases the size of the apple like it was growing on the tree. When the apple is mature, it can knock off from the tree and thanks to gravity arrives on the grass. At that point I import the model from Blender to Unity and uh, it sucks. It was time to change the illumination of the scene. No, this happened because I haven't paid the rent. It was very hard, but in the end I created something not so bad looking. Occasionally I run the simulation just to see Vilpus walks around. It helps me to find my peace of mind. As always, if you have any suggestion, please write it in the comment section. I will appreciate them very much. Since trees were in the right place, it was the turn for apples. The first thing that I did was creating an animator controller for this fruit. When the apple is called, the animator called the starts event. The only thing that this event do is call the next event, the growing one. The apples starts increasing their size, and when they reach the limit, the program activates the gravity instead of using the full animation. Why? Using gravity helps Apple to land exactly on the base, independently from which height they start falling. As you saw, Vilpu now are just ignoring the new food appear, but uh, we will solve this problem later. The idea that hanging over my head was to create a life bar system, a sort of rectangle that appear in all video games that tell to the observer how much life the creature has. Then, when Vilpu touches a food object like the apple just implemented, its life is restored and the object disappears. The easier thing to do was create a rectangle that spawns on the creature that you select with a mouse click. Now that I rewatch this clip, uh, I see a lot of horrible things. The rectangle don't despawn. They are orientated pseudo-randomly, they don't follow the movement of creatures, and I haven't washed my teeth. One moment. For the orientation problem, I thought to spawn the rectangles perpendicularly to the ray that starts from the cam and arrive to the creature. I had a light blue smaller rectangle to indicate the amount of life of the creature. Personally, I like blue a lot, but for a life bar, I think that red was a better idea. I changed the color and I started programming the life system. Vilpu starts with a life of 100, that is easily changeable by the observer, and every time it moves, it lost one unit of life. The size of the rectangle is proportional to the amount of light it remains. When light goes to zero, Vilpu disappears. <laughs> For the 123rd time, I changed the design of the bar. Now there are two rectangles, one black with fixed dimension and one red that reduces its size accordingly with the life of the creature. Finally, I added the script to eliminate the bar if the observer clicks away from Vilpu. I spend a lot of time to reprogram how Vilpu will move on the screen. I wanted to reach his two goals. Use the previous avoid object script, use a target script to orientate Vilpu towards the food. I literally spent three days on this. I very like you, soldier, but please, please execute my order and go towards that fucking apple. 
This is not time to play. This is time to become a man. Do you understand it? Yeah. Let's run. Are you fucking... Every time a creature finds an apple in an array of 13 meters, the creature targeted it, targeted it, targeted it, targeted it. The creature targeted it. Thanks to the target, the angular velocity of a Vilpu is increased or decreased in order to orientate the creature in the right direction. I checked manually how much the angular velocity must change to replicate a more natural behavior. This is the result. The avoid object script was still present, so Vilpu was able to avoid obstacle to reach its target. Not always, but a lot of time. Next time, I think I will create a reproduce system. In this way, we will be ready for the Volterra environment. Now I play the simulation for one minute just to appreciate the final result. I hope you enjoyed this episode, the next one will be even better. See you next time. Bye -bye.